Welcome back folks. In this video I'm going to be showing you how you can add a custom domain that you purchase from a domain provider like GoDaddy uh, and add it to your Office 365 tenant that you just set up. Uh, as, you, as you can see I am logged into my tenant here. Uh, it is a trial account so you can easily sign up for a trial account for 30 days and you can test around it, use it uh, see how it works and everything else. Uh, similar to that, I have a trial account and I'm logged into it. Currently, if you see, uh, when I go to the settings and then domains, uh, there is only the one that I get by default on Microsoft. And it's not really, you can use it to send and receive emails. However, it's not really pretty looking when you have an actual company and you wanted to set up uh, you know emails for your staff so that is the reason why you want to add a custom domain uh, most of the cases it's uh, your domain is somehow related to your company's name or your organization name uh, for this tutorial I just bought a custom domain from this domain provider it's called IONOS however you want to call it and uh, they are pretty good uh, usually you go with GoDaddy and they are quite expensive so this is an alternate it's uh, based in Canada I believe and I bought I just bought a domain from them and that domain is gonna be let's go to our dashboard let's exit out of there let's go to so this is my domain the techies.ca so just wanted to show you that I'm gonna move it to a different screen so the process of adding a domain is quite easy you click on add domain it's gonna ask you what domain you have in my case as I showed you it's the techies so I'm just gonna type that in here the techies looks good Click on use domain, it's loading and now it's gonna, so it's, the Microsoft has identified the, the vendor who is selling, who I have purchased the domain from and as you can see it gives you a direct option. You can verify this by signing into your domain provider. So if I hit verify, it's gonna ask me to log into INOS account and just by logging in it will automatically verify my domain let's do that uh, but there is other ways too so if you don't own a domain from the the, the famous domain providers like GoDaddy, INOS or DigiCert then you will have to use one of these options uh, that would be so if I just hit that and hit continue it will tell me what to do so it will basically ask me to go to verify the ownership so go to your domain registrar that means logging to the to the portal where you got the domain from and go to that DNS section so basically what it means is I would go log into my account I would navigate to the DNS section and as you can see you can you have a add record option it's a similar thing for almost all the domain providers out there so you basically hit add record and you can choose from which okay so it all depends on what Microsoft uh, asks you to do or what option you choose to verify the ownership of your domain so we'll go back here uh, and similarly there are other methods you can choose to to verify the ownership of your domain but in this tutorial we'll use the easiest one and choose the top one basically to sign into my INOS account and just just verify it automatically so we'll hit verify it will bring up this login window I'm gonna say since I'm already logged in to INOS it's not even asking me to enter my credentials so I'll just hit allow it says do you want uh, to allow Microsoft access and we'll say allow and what Microsoft is gonna do is gonna it's gonna go to my DNS and will automatically add the text record that I had to manually add before for me so if we go to the DNS section uh, it might be there or might not be oh there we go you can see domain proof that is the value and that's the txt record 
if I go back to the Microsoft page, it's, you can see it says, how would you like to connect, which, which means it's already verified my ownership. And now the second part is to add DNS record. So DNS record is quite complex uh, if you want to go deep into it. But basically, email needs to know the location. If someone sends you an email or if you send an email to someone, they need to, over the internet, they need the directions, basically. They need the name server or the records so that the emails can be distributed over the network to the correct recipient and sender. So that's what Microsoft is saying. Hey, we verified the ownership. Do you want us to add the DNS record as well? So we'll go ahead and say yes, continue. And it's going to say it. So this is the, the one that's responsible for emails. It's called M. It's going to add MX records and others. Basically, these three fields are going to be added to my domain account. So currently, you don't see any of them, right? When I go back and say add records, it will again prompt me to log in. But since I'm already logged in, it's just going to ask me, do you want to hit connect? I'm like, go ahead. It's easy. Let's hit allow and now it's connecting it's adding the domain or DNS record to my domain uh, yeah it's quite confusing domain DNS and as you can see it's all done easy let's hit done here and if we go back voila we have our custom domain added now the reason we added it here is so that we can create user accounts or email accounts using this domain rather than using this custom default domain provided by Microsoft so if I go to active user and uh, if I click on add user and just start gonna type test test and let's just call it test again and you can see there is there is this domain box and I can just switch it to the techies and if I hit next assign the license hit next next it's added now this is a valid email you can send an email to this you can receive an email from it over the internet so that's how you do it uh, if you want to know how to manually add the records if you want me to show you that quickly uh, please let me know in the comment section and I'll be able to uh, show you that and I just wanted to quickly ref refresh my domain account and show you that Microsoft did actually added these things so you can see the Amex record for Outlook the txt record and there should be one more canonical name that's that's it so those three are added by Microsoft and that is the reason why we can use it on our office 365 tenant that's it guys thanks for watching and uh, hope you have a great day take care